Hi, everybody, and welcome to our lesson on mixed numbers and improper fractions. Sounds rather ominous, like a fraction isn't behaving, but we're going to walk through what mixed numbers and fractions really mean. I am going to reference the page 260 in your text if you want to get that out, because Mrs. McKinley's drawings aren't super great. Um, but to begin with, um, I just drew a ruler in mine that has one, two, three, four, five. Notice they're not exact, and that's why I like the drawing in the text a bit better, and I'll put that up. Before we go further, I want to remind you what these are. I think you studied them a bit last year with Mrs. Pettis, but a mixed number is a whole number and fractional parts. It could be any number that is a whole number and a fraction. I put like three and three-fifths, but you could have a hundred and 78 seventy ninths. Um, you could have one million and one half. You could have two and 101 one hundred and thirtieths. It's any number that has a whole number plus a fraction added to it. An improper fraction is a fraction where the top number is bigger than the bottom number or the numerator is greater than or equal to the denominator. So I put 21 eighths. Um, so if you think of how many holes that is, and I, by hole I'm meaning W-H-O-L-E. So every eight pieces makes one hole. So I know that there are two groups of eight in here, so I know that there are two whole ones that were cut into eighths, like my Hershey's candy bar, um, and that made 16 of those pieces go away. So then I would take 21 minus 16, and I would know that there were five leftover pieces, and they were all cut into a piece that was an eighth of a whole. So we'll go through how to do that later, but I'm showing you that when the number is bigger on the top than the bottom, we know it's improper because there is a hole with a W that exists at least one, probably more, inside of it. So the first thing we are going to talk about is looking at a picture of it and seeing how this works. So I measured something, um, maybe I measured a sour gummy worm, and it was three and one half inches. Okay. I want to count those in how many halves total those are. So I'm going to say here's one half, two halves, three halves, four halves, five halves, six halves, seven halves. So I'm talking about the same amount, it's just in this one, they're all cut already into one half inch pieces. But I know that's the same amount as in three and one half. Many of you have seen this happen when you have like a whole candy bar and a part of another, but you have a couple, three kids in your family, you have to divide the big one up and the small one so that all the pieces are the same or somebody gets angry. I promise this is page 260 in your book. I want to point out right here they have a three inch diagram and they have measured out to right here, which is two holes and then if you count um, these right here, one, two, three, four, five, those are eight inches. So the halves are right here, the quarters are right here, the eighths are right here. So this is two and five eighths inches. We know that in between each one there are eight eighths because eight eighths make a whole, just like two halves make one inch, two half inches make one inch. So I know that eight eighths make a whole. So if I would do eight sixteen, and then add 16 plus 5 more 8's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 16 plus 5, that's 21 eighths if I was just dealing with these little pieces. So you can see how looking at a ruler might help, and you are more than welcome to grab a ruler during your assignment 
to take a look at how that works. So it's maybe more, maybe easier to see here where the half inches are the big lines in the middle. And then you go down to the fourths and then you go down even further to the eighths and these little itty bitty guys, those are sixteenths. So we've already worked with our fancy forms of one. I'm just going to cover that briefly. Remember, we can express a one any way we want as an improper fraction. So I could have 100, 100. I could have 211, 211. I could have 2 over 2. It doesn't matter what you do. You've just chopped and sliced and diced whatever you have into littler pieces, depending on your fraction. So that becomes useful in some of our next um, pieces of working with fractions. So the, the next thing I want to show you is how to more quickly convert between improper fractions and mixed numbers because depending on the directions on the quizzes and the tests or what you're trying to do in your math world, it depends on what you are, um, what you want. So we're going to look at example number one as six and seven eighths. Let's say our directions are make this into an improper, I'm going to call it an imp frac. How do I make that into an imp, imp frac, an improper fraction? So if I have six and seven eighths, I know that I want them all cut into whatever this denominator is, meaning I want each of these holes to be cut into eight pieces, or all of my kids will get angry. If I have eight kids over, they all need to be the same size. So I'm going to cut these into eighths. So if I have six large candy bars and I'm cutting them into eighths, how many is that? Well, that's easy. I just multiply these two. That's six times eight. That's 48. Okay, well, but I have seven already. Maybe my husband came in and, and stole one piece, and so now I only have seven eighths, which is why I don't have seven candy bars. Um, I'm missing one, but I need to add that on to the 48. So down here I got to 48, but now I need to add on the seven that I already have. So we need to look at what 48 plus seven is, and if I do my math correctly, I should get 48 plus 7, I have 55 pieces. And we know what kind of pieces they are. They aren't 55 holes, they're 55 eighths. So your improper fraction ends up being 55 eighths. So if you look at what we do, you multiply this times this, and then the next step is that you add this number plus the 7. We'll try another one um, here. Let's look at 3 and 2 thirds. Pause the video and try to write that as an imp fraction or an improper fraction. All right, when we look at this, we know that we have thirds and a hole. So I know I want to get all of these holes chopped up into pieces the same size. So I need them into thirds. So I have three holes into three thirds. So I know that's going to be a nine. My holes are going to be nine, but I need to add those two extra guys on. So it's going to bring me to 11 and their size that they are are ninths. All right, last one. Let's try four and five sixths. We have four holes, and we know that we want to cut them into pieces that are the size of a sixth. Pause the video if you haven't already and try this one. Make it into an improper fraction. All right, so we're going to multiply these two, and I know that six times four is 24. And then I have five extra pieces to add on to that 24, giving me 29 pieces. And what size are they? They are sixths. All right, we have kind of gone through my example two and my example three. 
Um, let's go through how to make improper fractions into mixed numbers, because that's usually how we are going to see things. Let's look at um, 22 fifths. Okay, we're going to go backwards through this process. First, we're going to try to suck out of here how many fifths there are in 22. How many whole candy bars can we create from 22 pieces? Well, I know that 22 divided by 5 is going to be 4. Okay, so that's, that's my whole number right there. How many pieces are left over from there? We'll take a look. We got to 20, but there are two pieces extra left over. And so you have two of them, but they're not just two holes. They are two fifths left over. And so you need to subtract for the leftovers. So I know that 22 divided by 5 is 20. And then I would take a 22 minus 20 equals 2. So if you want to do that off to the side, you certainly can do that. Um, let's look at 41, my example number 5, 41 over 12. That one looks a little bit more ominous, meaning a little bit scarier numbers. But if we just simply look at, okay, I have 41 pieces. And it's going to take 12 pieces to put back together, put Humpty Dumpty back together again to make a hole. So how many 12s are there in 41? Well, I know if I skip count 12, 24, 36, I can get 3, 12, sorry, 12, 24, 36. That's three holes. And now I got to 36. And I need to see what the difference is from 41. So off to the side sometimes, I'll do 41 minus 36. And some of you could do this mentally, but it's good to have the work off to the side. And I see that there are five leftovers. I put LOs. Well, when we put our five over here, those are not five whole candy bars. Those are pieces. What size are they? They are the size of a twelfth. So imagine that you go get a Hershey's bar. There's a big difference between a whole Hershey bar and a twelfth of a Hershey bar. So it's important that you realize that your leftovers are pieces of the whole. Last example I'm going to try is let's do 34. thirteenths. Okay, so I can see here, you can pause the video and try to suck out as many thirteens and find the leftovers. And let's go through it together after you've unpaused it. So I can see that I can get thirteen out of here two times. That gets me, when I divide this, that gives me two. And now I got to twenty-six. So I am off to the side, going to do, okay, I had 34. I'm going to subtract 26, and I'm going to find that it's going to be 8 leftovers. But remember, this is a leftover. It is 8 parts of a whole that was thir originally 13 pieces. Sometimes you're going to have to compare an improper fraction to a fraction. When you do that, make sure that you convert both of them into improper or proper fractions. So you're comparing apples to apples or oranges to oranges. Let's say that you have six halves and you want to know if that's greater than or less than two and one half. It's not as easy to tell. Some of you can see that. But if I were to convert the six halves back into a uh, mixed number, I would say that two goes into six three times, and there's no leftovers. So it's just a three. 
and that is definitely